Hi, we're on page 95 of Three Worlds, or Plan of Redemption, Nelson Barber, Charles Taze Russell. They are now discussing the Jubilee, and of course they're making a chronological application of it. We saw in the last one, they're picking on the year 1875 as being the beginning of the Great Jubilee, and it's overlap with the, the millennium, which they b taught began in 1872 or 1873. And Barber's argument goes on. The Jews kept six kinds of Sabbaths. The seventh day, the seventh week, the seven times seven, that is 50th day, which is the day of Pentecost, and was fulfilled by the descent of the Holy Spirit. They also kept the Sabbath beginning on the seventh month, the seventh year, and the 50th year, according to Leviticus 25. This last was a jubilee, which means a reverting back or restitution. In the year of Jubilee, ye shall return every man unto his possession, according to Leviticus 25, verse 13. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive, until the times of restitution of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. And that's all Acts 3, verses 19 to 21. A very big passage indeed for Charles Taze Russell. It was on the main page of his studies in the scriptures. Uh, I should say the title page of his studies in the scriptures. It seems that these times of restitution of all things have been spoken of by every prophet, either directly or indirectly. But did Christ speak of this restitution? For he was a prophet. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall come first and restore all things. That's Matthew 17, 11. Then there is to be a restitution of all things, the Sodomites, Indians, Hottentots, Jews, in fact, everything lost by the fall. As in Adam all die, so in Christ all shall be made alive, because there is to be a restoration of all things. And so important is this restitution that God has spoken of it by every prophet since the world began. But did Daniel speak of it? Yes, I answer. First, in the type of Nebuchadnezzar, who was made to represent the restitution in all its phase, all its phases. He lost his dominion, was driven out with the beasts of the field, and at the appointed time had a restitution of all that he lost, with the, an addition of glory and majesty. Daniel also speaks of this restitution of all things, where he teaches that the kingdom is to be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, and that the lost dominion is to be thus restored. Was Job a prophet? Then he speaks of the restitution of all things. And how? The whole book teaches a restitution. God speaks in symbols, parables, and dark sayings. And the whole book of Job is an allegory, teaching a restitution of all things, with an increase of glory. Does he not lose all that he has? And the end with him was a restitution of all things. But Moses was a prophet, and he has spoken. Or has he spoken of a restitution? Yes, I, and in tones of thunder, the whole sabbatic system organized and carried out to teach it. Read Leviticus 25, where we learn that the system of Sabbaths, which culminated in the Jubilee, leads to a full and complete restitution of both person and inheritance. The law provides, provided six Sabbaths terminating in a jubilee or restitution, but being only a shadow of good things to come and not the very substance, only pointed to the great and final restitution to which they failed of attaining. Therefore, there remaineth a restitution and a keeping of a Sabbath to the people of God. And if we follow out its teachings, we shall surely arrive at the substance. The system of Sabbaths was a system of multiples. The 50th day was reached by the multiplying seven Sabbaths. And ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath shall ye number 50 days. Leviticus 23:15. And the Jubilee was also thus reached. Thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee, seven times seven years. In the space of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet 
of the Jubilee to sound. So we can see, as we pointed out in the last segment, that all of this is to establish the the year 1875 as the beginning of the Great Jubilee and overlapping as it was with the their count anyway of the chronology of the 6,000 years. So we're in the millennium according to Barbara and Russell. We're in it already. So you can see how they can build on this system of jubilees, 1925, 50 years after 1875, and also 1975, although I don't remember anything being made of that when I was baptized four years before 1975. But it was, coincidence or not, 50 years since 1925 and 100 years since the Great Jubilee began, according to Russell and Barber's chronology, in 1875. To put a link on to a couple of the points he makes in here, for instance, the typology. Notice the type of Nebuchadnezzar, that is Daniel chapter 4, the tree being cut down. They're still clinging to that despite the fact they've officially repudiated types. But this great type that they've held at least since Barber's day, the type of the, the tree cut down, meaning more than just Nebuchadnezzar's personal destiny, they're still clinging to. And Job is an allegory? Well, I don't think they quite teach that anymore, but the fact that they insist that all of the prophets predicted the restitution, and all of it goes, of course, to proving that their chronology is correct. I also put a link into Walter Rauschenbusch, who has a sane take on the Jubilee and its application to Christian work and Christian belief today.